All right, it is, looks like we are live. So here we go. All right, good evening. Welcome to part eight. Let's take a look here at what we want to get. Major things that we have left are the barrel, the uh, magazine, trigger and trigger guard, the detailings with things like the bolts or screws or whatever. Uh, looks like we have some kind of fire, uh, fire mode switch here. We have these um, vents here. We have the, I believe it's called the cocking handle. We have the rail. And then we have the optics. Of course, you know, I mentioned things that are actually not even some of the, not exactly major things. Really, the, the major thing is the optics, the magazine, and maybe this, you know, barrel and trigger and trigger guard. And then we have the, the detailing to do. So I'm going to see if we can start with the optics because that's, looks to me like it's going to be a bit more complex than say the magazine or really anything else as far as a complex shape um, other parts may be complex to add but the shapes the shapes themselves are not that complex all right so we want optics let's turn this back on if we can hello there we go all right, awesome. So, ooh, number of different ways we could do this, but we'll probably do a basic extrude. Um, sorry for the noise in the background. I'm not sure if that's coming through. Actually, it looks like it's not based on my audio meter, which I hope that's true because it's it's pretty noisy here. Okay, so we've extruded. Um, do we want an exact match here? Yeah, let's see. I'm going to turn off these here. Let's, let's make this an exact match. Cool. So what I did was turned off. Well, let's see. Or did I? What did I grab? Oh, I guess I grabbed this. Basically, without the bevel, I'm trying to grab, get that exact point of reference without the bevel. Because what happens here is if we add this bevel in, we're not going to map the, uh, if we snap it to this, you'll see how it's rounded off. And so it wouldn't be a perfect map. Wouldn't be, or I should say, wouldn't be a perfect snap in this case. Save that. Oh, actually, choo -choo -choo. let's see what's going on here. Um, these seem to match. Might be an issue of just lacking geometry, is what it looks like. So, the way we did this was kind of weird, but it looks like we can add some geometry. Normally, we would actually kind of cut across this way, and later we may change it to that, but this will do for now. Do, do, do. Okay, so how do we want to do this? This is where I could actually even see that the proportions of this may be too thin. Um, so we may need to actually make the gun body wider. Let me hide our, uh, extra objects here. Yeah, that's definitely something that normally would be wider in theory. Um, so how do we want to balance this? Out. I 
biggest problem is I do like the width of the of the grip, so we may make a. change this yeah what I might have to do is get, go ahead and get the basic shape out of the way and then see if we can change the width later because that would be a more complex process to have or at least in theory it'd be a more complex process to have this um, sort of tapered Yeah, I don't want to mess with the width too much. Let's let's see what we could do here. And X-ray. So what this looks like to me. Let's see, grab this. Oh, you know what? Let's see. Okay, so this would probably be a separate piece. Um, this would be inset, and this would be inset. So what that would mean practically is we can fix some of some of what we're doing here in a second. This part looks like it'd be extruded. Actually, we wanna grab these sections. Same here. So essentially, we'd have something like that. And let's see if we can cut this and snap the cursor to selected. Go to Object, Origin to 3D Cursor. We will delete this geometry here. Delete that, and we shall flip this over with a mirror modifier along the Z axis. There we go. Cool. So far, so good. So essentially, this is sort of what I'm imagining. And it looks like I might want to simply duplicate this, rotate it so I can get the right orientation, and then figure out things like width, proportion, so forth. And then finally, we'll, we'll figure out the width of this um, in a later video, I think. All right. So it looks like the optic might start here. Do, do, do. What would we want to do? What do we want to do? Oh, you know what? I need to select that edge, edge loop. There we go. So let's see. We want. Probably want this to be like optic would normally probably be something like this type of width. I'm guessing. <laughs> I think I mentioned in a previous video. I I'm more familiar with pistols than I am rifles. And something like that something not too crazy and we want this top to be rounded so let's let's try that Probably what I'll do is kind of a subtle raise those, then, let's see. X-ray mode, just select this, select that, and something like that. Now let's see what this looks like if we add bevel. Actually, let's copy the bevel, so this one has a bevel object make links do, do, do. 
what else do we want to do here? I think let's see modifiers. There we go. Uh, let's see. Let's add that mirror back. Oh, let's see. I've got the wrong, wrong primary, wrong uh, active object selected. So there we go. And then our bevel. I'm going to switch our bevel. I think to angle for right now, and we might switch it back. But. Uh, Ooh, that's not very tight, is it? Okay, but that's, let's, uh, we'll approximate this. We'll maybe adjust that later. There you go. Perfect. And then, well, <laughs> what do we want to do here? There's, that at least gives us an idea. In a second here, we'll have to map the, map the bevel. All right, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. That still may actually be not wide enough. So this is where we may actually have to make the optic a lot smaller. It looked about the right proportion from the side, but uh, we might actually need to make it smaller. Uh, let's see, scale along the y-axis. Let's turn on clipping and see, nope, that's not gonna work. We will need to scale, we will need to, Switch into object mode, and cursor is selected, so it selects that object, and then scale along Y, using the 3D cursor as our origin. There we go. That's what we want. Something like, something like that. That still may not be quite wide enough. Let's. Grab these sides. Yeah, something like this. And what I'm thinking is, I believe this goes straight across. Yeah, that goes straight across. So we can create a cutout here if we get clever. Probably an inset on both sides. So what that will look like is I'm going to select all this and press I. Perfect. Of course, that's going to give us a weird result. We might want to apply our mirror just to make this a little simpler. So I'm going to apply our mirror in object mode, select everything here. And so what this will do is this will give us our cutout. So what, uh, what amount do we want to use? 0.01. 0 0.015 maybe? No, too much. Probably too much. 0 0.011. I think that might work. So, I'm just trying to decide how much how much of a offset we want here. Maybe a little bit more. Something like that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so we've used 0 0.012. So we can use that same pattern on this side. Let me turn off subdivision surfaces so we can see here. Again, this goes straight across. This is a perfectly straight line. So we can use that to our advantage. This is where things might get a little bit interesting. Not sure, not quite sure if this will work the way I want, but let's try it. So type in the number here. And now what we can do is bridge these two together. So let's see what menu is that on Bridge somewhere. Bridge edges? Nope. B 
bridge edge loops. So that's kind of what I want to do, but not exactly. We may have the wrong number of geometry, and that's why this totally glitched out. So let's instead, I'm going to delete the faces. And what do we need here? Oh, let's see. We will need, oh, <laughs> of course that didn't work as well as I had hoped. Geometry does not match. So let's see if we can add a loop here. And J, J, see we've got two across there so we might have to we might get I'm just trying to make sure we have the right number of edge loops so we have one two three four five so we'll need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So we need a couple more on this side just to make it work. We might be able to add one here and one there. Later on, we'll try to cut this support, uh, appropriately. Okay. So let's let's see if we can get this this time around. This is control E bridge edge loops and perfect. We might want to add a couple of loops inside. If we add subdivision surfaces, this actually looks pretty good as is. Um, that actually is working much better than I would normally expect. <laughs> This is one of the few times you can get away with, we might even leave some of this, I'm not sure. Mainly we can get away with this simply because simply because a lot of things are flat and we can get away with, with ingons, which are, if you remember, in stands for number and so ingon means basically any number of, of sides for a polygon. But I am seeing some distortion here, so let's see if we can cut this in half. Delete vertices, whoops, that's x-ray. Delete vertices, nope, I got too much vertices. Okay, so that's right. And mirror, Z, torn on clipping just because. What this will allow us to do is fix the geometry on one side and we'll copy to the other. Perfect, okay. So I'm going to add two here. These two loops will go up. And turn off X-ray. Basically, we're aiming to get these loops up here. So this doesn't have to be perfect because this is not really the main geometry. Ideally, this would be a little bit better, but we can get away with what we're doing here. Okay, and turn off subdivision services. We'll need to cut this. Um, see can I cut across here so far so good this looks like it cuts here and I might just use this triangle quad and just leave it I think we got rid of all of the ingons and so now turn subdivision surfaces back on perfect so then we'd have to figure out at some point our optics, but this is what, uh, so like maybe a piece of glass that we actually put
put in here. But I'll probably have to study more of that to prepare for it. So that actually went surprisingly well. Like I said, I'm not sure what we're going to do as far as our width. That's also going to be something I'll have to look at some reference to figure out what our best options are. But in the meantime, let's fix our bevel here. So let's select face angles. Nope. Let's see. Grab something that's 90 degrees. Select similar face angles. And add a mean bevel weight of 0 0.02. We'll switch this back to weight on the modifier, and then we'll make sure we grab parts of it that are supposed to actually like the smooth, smooth uh, drop off right here. But I don't like it on this side, so da, da, da. turn off subdivision surfaces. Go across here and turn this on. Basically, turn on the bevel, turn back subdivision surfaces. Also, right here, I want some hard edge. That looks a lot better. This part, oh, did I? Hmm, I think I grabbed this anyway. Let's turn that off just for the sake of trying it. Hmm. So, I like that we can smooth this out if we want to but I might actually make that hard anyway because it's not supposed to be a slide and it also looks like we're having some issues here that may just be lack of geometry yeah it looks better perfect oh uh, let's see why did that dead end? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so. Let's see, can we cut this all the way up here and then we may have to dead end that. So what if we add this one? So far, so good. And we will do a Join there. Perfect. So I'm gonna grab this. I think I, I think I actually want some some bevel there. Yeah, it just gives it gives it more definition. Awesome. So let's see what we can do. I'm gonna duplicate this, rotate it. Like I said, later on we'll probably I'm I'm just roughing getting a rough estimate if we scale this down is that too too small it's definitely a lot smaller um do, do, do. yeah i'm gonna have to check out let me see if i can turn my grid off for just a second think it's here turn off the floor turn off the axes there you go hide that guy and I think I have the turntable Which is not letting me flip this the way that I want. Almost. I'm sure there's a hot key for it. Basically, turntable rotation means that it's easier to do this than to flip this on its side. And that can be helpful, but in this case, it's not. <laughs> so. We might just have to take everything and parent it to an empty or something and then rotate it. But already that gives me an a rough idea of, of what we want. In fact, I'm going to save this. I'm going to map this to an empty. 
do, do, do. All right, so we just won't save this. So this is what this will look like on the side. So yeah, it does look like our gun is maybe a little bit thin. It does look like our optics maybe need to be, let's see if we just scale this along the Y and then remove the scale for the, for this. See, I think we want to clear the parent, keep transformation, and then remove the scale. Yeah, it's something. So ultimately, what this looks like we're going to need is a thicker, thicker rifle, perhaps. And Yeah, that looks a little bit better. So we may we may have a little bit smaller optics, but it does look like we want probably a thicker, thicker rifle. So that is something I'm going to have to play with proportions, and it is something you have to keep in mind for anything like this. That we are basing it off of imagination, but there are design reasons why a modern rifle has certain dimensions and features. And so forth. So that may be a determining factor in how this looks in the end. We may have to adjust things if things are not fitting the character, not ergonomic enough. But that's one of the great things about working with modifiers is we can, in theory, more easily change the overall design before we finalize things with modifiers in ways that if we created all the geometry ahead of time, then we might have a harder issue with, um, or a big, bigger, bigger issue with changing the proportions if we find out, oh, this doesn't actually fit the character. For example, if this, the, uh, just the hands didn't fit on the, on the rifle or whatever, things like that. Okay, so I think that's it for this. Like I said, I've, I've saved it earlier, so I'll probably go back to that save. But this gives us a rough idea. Let's let's look at what this looks like with rendering. We are getting there. Let's see. I'm gonna set the yeah, there we go. We are definitely getting there. So one of the yeah, the big big critical thing right now is figuring out some of these main dimensions and if this is going to line up or if we'll need to have some major changes even this right now you can see is a bit taller than most optics but maybe we could go with that just for the stylized version it's not necessarily very realistic but it may work something else i might do is take some of these edges and round them out so for example grabbing this edge and instead of using zero two we might use something a little bit closer to, yeah, maybe 0.8. So we don't necessarily need this to be super sharp on this edge. And that gives, we'd have to make their, our optics a little bit thinner but that gives a little bit more of a rifle feel to it. Like I said, we'll have to we'll have to determine that later. But yeah, that's that's uh, looking a little bit better. You hide the optic. Something like that looks to me like it's a good bit better than what we had before, which is just this hard edge. All right. Well, that's it for today, I think. And yeah, nothing, nothing else really that uh, that we'll have time to cover today. Just have to do some some research, some measurements, and try to figure out what what changes we need to make to make this work, and what things we can leave the same. 
And then we can continue with our mag and really just the detailing of the rest of this, which is really exciting. All right. Well, thank you for sticking it out to the end. If you've watched it uh, all the way to this point and next, uh, next time around should be Thursday. So be sure to tune in. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon.